Well, every single week is a pleasant reminder of just how elite this LSU offense truly is. You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, thanks for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, you can also check us out on YouTube as well. Just search Locked on LSU on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified as soon as Locked on LSU drops. My name is Caroline Fenton. I am your host every single day. You can follow me on Twitter at Caroline Fenton 1. And today's edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100 daily fantasy sports made easy with prize picks. All right, let's get into it because it was yet another dominant showing from LSU's offense taking down army 62 to nothing. I'm going to be completely honest with all of y'all. I, I have a, a strange feeling about this game and it call call me paranoid call me looking way too into things you know you can accuse me of thinking that this team this offense this offense rather not this team this offense is a little bit too good to be true but i had the the tiniest worry in the back of my mind all last week about this game i thought are they looking ahead to the bye are they looking ahead to alabama Are they going to be overlooking an opponent, which all the respect in the world to Army, all the respect in the world to Army and all of our veterans and all those who have served. But I thought, are you overlooking a team that you should beat? Are you looking ahead to the bye, to getting healthy? And are you looking ahead to essentially what is yet another SEC West championship in Alabama in a couple of weeks? I think we saw from the very first possession that no. That was not the case, that LSU took this game seriously, that they understood the task at hand. They weren't looking two weeks ahead at Alabama. They were very much so focused on coming in, getting a job done, doing what they do best, getting said job done, and then moving ahead and looking forward to the bye. So I I will say, I was just the teeniest, tidiest bit worried. I knew that LSU should beat this team. I I knew it. I knew, like, my, my head was telling me, Caroline, calm down. Everything's going to be okay. LSU is going to win this football game. But my heart was saying, look, girlfriend, you've you've been disappointed by this team a lot of times before. Uh, but that was not the case. LSU takes down Army 62 to nothing. And my overall takeaway here is you took care of business against a team that you should have taken care of business against. I mean, at any time you can shut out any team in college football, and I don't care if it's an SEC opponent, I don't care if it's an FCS opponent, and I don't care if it's somewhere in between. Any time you're able to limit an opposing team to a big old goose egg on the scoreboard, I'll take that. Now, I want to get more into the defense later on this week, and we absolutely will get into that. It's not like I'm all of a sudden saying that this this defense has uh, turned over a new leaf. This is an Army team that wasn't able to score against Troy last week. So keep that in mind. Take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt. Uh, But being able to put up 62 points, being able to put your backups in at the half, and we'll get into that as well, um, that's a good day. That's it. That is a job well done by this LSU football team. And of course, like any win for this LSU team is, it was led by the offense. LSU wrapped up the first half up 86 to nothing. The offense was dominant. The offense has been the most reliable aspect of this team by a mile because knock on wood through eight games this season, the offense has been what it has been. The offense has been reliable. The offense has put up a bunch of points and a bunch of yards on every single team that they've played. I mean, the Florida State game is the only game so far this season where LSU's put up 
put up less than 500 yards. And they put up 450 against Florida State. So it's the, this offense isn't, okay, which team are we going to get? Which offense are we going to get? Is LSU's deep, excuse me, is LSU's offense going to show up? We don't know if the defense is going to show up. Is the LSU offense going to show up? That's never really been a question. And now, again, I'm knocking on all the wood and keeping all of my fingers crossed and, you know, doing all my little juju not to jinx that. But I think at this point, it might just very well be that's just what this football team is. And look, it was a weird weekend in college football. USC fell to Utah. USC had one of the most electric offenses in the country. Caleb Williams was a Heisman favorite. They dropped their second game in a row, first Notre Dame, and then now to Utah. Look at Washington has struggled for the past two weeks. Washington, which has really been LSU, Washington, one and two in the top offense in the country, kind of been going back and forth the past couple of weeks. Well, they uh, struggled. Struggled against Oregon two weeks ago, which I get it. Oregon's a good team, but they struggled to put up points against Arizona State. So even some of the top offenses in the country have kind of zigged and zagged, not always been the most reliable aspect of the team. Hasn't looked as dominant some weeks as they might other weeks. That's not the case for LSU. LSU continues to be dominant. First, it was led by Jaden Daniels. Now, Jaden Daniels, again, like I mentioned, Got uh, sat at the half. Garrett Nussmeyer came in. So, uh, Jaden Daniels finished the day of the half, 11 of 15, 279 yards, three touchdowns, and then you know, five rushes for six yards. Nothing big on the ground there. I, th- I mean, that's huge. Just the passing stats alone against Army. So, 279 yards, three touchdowns on 11 completions. Brian Thomas three receptions for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Malik Neighbors, four for 121 and two touchdowns. I mean, we talk, uh, I, I, I talked about this over the weekend, about the comparisons between this 2023 offense and the 2019 offense. And look, Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors are doing what Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase did, where both of them get over 100 receiving yards in a single game. That's not something that comes around very often. It's not very frequent that you get a, a college football team that has not just one receiver that can consistently catch over 100 yards worth of footballs, but two. And you're seeing that consistently week over week. If it's not the century mark, it's something really close for one, if not both of those receivers. And just the stat line alone, three receptions, 122 yards for Brian Thomas. That is so freaking impressive. And, of course, a majority of that yardage came from the massive 86-yard touchdown pass from Jaden Daniels in the third series of the game. And this is, you know, I, I, allow me to be incredibly nitpicky here and allow me to say this with the, the asterisk and the grain of salt of, I know this offense is elite. But in the second series, I mean, Jaden Daniels, Missed two receivers and LSU went three and out. Uh, he overthrew Mason Taylor and, you know, you could, the the camera pan, I was not at the game, I was watching at home. The camera pan to Jaden Daniels and he was kind of pressing on his chest, directed toward, uh, toward Mason Taylor, like that was on me. That was my bad. Uh, which it was. He overthrew Mason Taylor. He overthrew Malik Neighbors. A couple of rare misses from Jaden Daniels there in the second series. And I'm kind of thinking, okay, is he shaking up? Are they trying something new? Was he not aware of the play calls it on the receivers? But I think in that third series, the massive 86 yard touchdown to Brian Thomas, that's when at least I settled in and I was like, all right, there we go. That's that, uh, that's that massive offensive play that was able to follow up a three and out and able to follow up a longer series, offensive series with their first possession of the game when they had a couple tries at the goal line and Logan Diggs punched one in for a one-yard touchdown run. But that's how it started. Marched down the field, you got into the end zone, struggled a little bit with that three and out, and then that 86-yard touchdown pass, and this team was off to the races. Now I want to continue. I had one other thought on something that I saw from Jaden Daniels. Again, kind of nitpicky, but, you know, bear with me here. And then also the backups. What we saw from some of the younger guys, why that's important, why I think that that is relevant. So we'll get into that coming up next. Now it is time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Because much like Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors, that duo, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that 
actually taste good. It's what I just mentioned. Brian Thomas over 100 rushing, excuse me, 100 receiving yards on just three targets. Malik Neighbors, same thing, over 120 receiving yards on four targets. So those two, each with two touchdowns on the night against Army. I mean, one question that I have for Alabama coming up in a couple of weeks is, who do you have to stop them? Because nobody this season has been able to stop those two. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. I mean, they make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. They've got full flavor, and they're incredibly well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. One of my personal favorites, my favorite flavor of Athletic Brewing Company is the lime and salt. Now, we're getting into fall, so it's not really lime and salt season anymore. I know that. I'm aware of that. And I still drink them and I love them because they're great tasting and they're also award winning. Their brews beat out full strength beers in global competitions. Another thing that I love, of course, I love the the lime and salt flavor. But another thing that I love is there's no hangovers ever. I know sometimes we're all feeling it on a Sunday morning. We've got a Halloween coming up this weekend. And I know that I have a lot to do this weekend. I don't want to be bedridden or couch ridden with a hangover. So I will be looking toward Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews this weekend. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a, st- at a store near you, or you can buy online at athleticbrewingcompany.com. First-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off of your online order. That's code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at Athletic Brewing Company. Excuse me, 15% off at Athletic Brewing dot com near beer exclusions and conditions apply athletic brewing company fit for all times all right thanks again for making locked in lsu your first listen every single day and hey this season locked on is kicking up our college football coverage with locked on college football kickoff live so every single friday locked on will go live at 11 a.m eastern that's 10 a.m central if you are in baton rouge on every single lockdown college youtube channel college football kickoff live will cover the playoff implications now that we're getting into the last few weeks of the season i'm sad and i'm happy at the same time uh, the conference rivalry games and they'll go in depth like only lockdown can, including insight and analysis from our stable of lockdown college hosts covering their team every single day. So you can find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You will not want to miss it. All right, let's get back into it because LSU did what they need to do this past weekend. They took care of business against a team that they should have taken care of business against. Now, It's on to Bama. We got two weeks to break down Bama. But first, before we move on to Alabama talk, because we'll be doing plenty of Alabama talk over the next two weeks, a couple of a couple more of my takeaways from the game on Saturday. Now, like I said, allow me to be nitpicky because I understand that putting up 62 freaking points on anyone is so impressive, especially when half of those points, almost half of those points came from your backup. So look, bear with me here. I understand that I'm being nitpicky, but it was something that bothered me in the moment. So I would be remiss if I didn't at least bring it up. As we talk about the offense, we talk about Jaden Daniels, who has been the most reliable and consistent quarterback in all of college football. You look at the other Heisman Trophy contenders, you know, Michael Penix Jr., has not been very impressive over the last two weeks. J.J. McCarthy has not played teams as good as Ole Miss or Florida State. So Jaden Daniels really has been the most consistent and reliable in terms of production. But we'll get into Heisman talk, of course. Alabama, Heisman, all the fun stuff throughout the week and uh, throughout next week as well. But there was one thing in Jaden Daniels. This is late in the second quarter. Um, You know, it's after... This is, no, no, no. So this is their second to last possession of the second quarter. So second to last possession of the first half. And LSU is driving. um, And Jaden Daniels gets called for an intentional grounding. I believe it was second and five. So Jaden Daniels gets called for an intentional grounding. They get pushed back. LSU settles for a field goal. Now they come back on the next possession. They run a two minute. They're able to find the end zone. You're up 38, nothing at the half. Um, So in that intentional grounding, you kick a field goal, you go up 31, nothing. Now, look, I know 
you're up 31 nothing. It didn't change the outcome of the game. It was not the difference between a win or a loss. But the reason why I feel like it's relevant to at least bring up is that's not the kind of call that that you can afford against Alabama. That kind of mistake from Jaden Daniels is not something that you can afford against Florida or against Texas A&M. Look, I think that LSU absolutely can win every single game on the rest of their schedule, and I think that they should beat Florida. I think that they should beat Texas A&M. I'm not going to say that they should beat Alabama, but I'm saying it's absolutely possible. But the margin for error in some of those games, as we know with any SEC game, the margin for error is so freaking thin and you know getting pushed back 10 15 yards to just a mistake from Jaden Daniels you might not be able to afford that in two weeks at Brian Denny Stadium so it's a coaching opportunity for Jaden Daniels it's something that a learning opportunity a coaching opportunity especially within the confines of an environment of it's not going to make or break the, the game I mean you end up getting three instead of seven well it, fine you're up 30 points anyway I'm just saying that's something to look at moving forward, and it's a coaching point for Mike Denbrock and for Brian Kelly moving forward for Jaden Daniels of, hey, you did it, didn't hurt the team, but here's how we avoid that in the future. Here's how we're not going to be held to a field goal instead of a touchdown on a on a on just a mistake, a quarterback mistake uh, against, uh, more, against more difficult competition. So that was one thing. Done being nitpicky, I promise. Um, the other thing that I loved to see on Saturday night was you got to see the backups. And I, I really hoped that that was going to be the case. I know there was an un- over-under of uh, how how soon it would be before you put the backups in. And I agreed. Uh, up 38 nothing. You know, I told my roommate, I was like, I'd be shocked if we saw Jaden Daniels here. I know that you want to rack up the stat sheet in terms of the Heisman, but it's more important to have your quarterback rested and healthy for the biggest game of the season rather than racking up the stat sheet and racking up the numbers for the Heisman Trophy. He already has a very solid resume and that is continuing to be written throughout the rest of the season. Uh, But you got to see Garrett Nussmeyer in the second half. I like to see that. You got to get Garrett Nussmeyer a little bit of experience. He was 7 of 12 of 90 yards, a touchdown um, on the day. So he looked good. He looked fine. You know, Jaden Daniels absolutely gives you the best opportunity to win this season. I don't know if that's if that's uh, still a point of contention for a lot of LSU fans that for some reason love to uh, berate me and any other LSU fan out there that said, hey, maybe Jaden Daniels is actually good. Um, so I'm wondering where all of those uh, Nuss bussers are out there now. And that's no disrespect to Garrett Nussmeyer. He went out there. He had a nice night. Um, but they also elected to run the ball a good bit. And so that was the opportunity getting to see Trey Holly in his first time out there as an LSU Tiger. Trey Holly, of course, a five-star running back recruit out of Baton Rouge, a true freshman in the 2023 class. Great to see him get some work and also not just get some work, but look pretty darn good doing it. Trey Holly, six rushes for 91 yards and a touchdown. He had that massive 67-yard touchdown run, which earned him SEC Freshman of the Week honors. Great to see him be able to, uh, to, to one, get his first opportunity as an LSU Tiger and have that first opportunity be so impactful for the, for the football game. Uh, some other more depth pieces here. Uh, Lance Hurd was in at right tackle. We kind of assumed that that would be the case. Emory Jones um, – Still recovering from an injury. So I would assume that he should be back against Alabama. So you now give Emory Jones the full bye week and the full week before Army to get 100%, to get healthy. So he is uh, set and ready to go for Alabama here in a couple weeks. Also, allowed Makai Wingo to rest. Uh, he was out this past week. That was something that Brian Kelly opened up his Thursday press conference with, was that Wingo was going to be out. I hope that it was more of a, hey, Just get some rest, relax. We're not going to need you. So if you're not 100%, take this time and take this opportunity to get 100% because we're going to need you here in a couple weeks. I would assume that that was the case uh, for Makai Wingo. But overall, great to get your backup some work, one thing, and great to get your starters some rest. So I was happy to see that. Uh, Coming up next... Just kind of overall thoughts on the day. A unique game day experience for LSU. So I'll break into my thoughts on that coming up next. 
I've got to tell y'all about one of the most exciting daily fantasy sports platforms in the country, and that is Prize Picks. It's the most exciting and easy way to play daily fantasy sports, and it's 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 you it's you it's against the numbers. It's battling thousands of other players. They've got pros, you've got sharks, and you can pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in and in and in. And I'll tell y'all, Prize Picks is the most fun that I've had winning up to twenty five times my money this football season. You just select two or more players. I always like to rack it up all the way to five or six players because why not? You can pick more or less on their projected stats and then place your entry. So if you're looking at it for the NFL this upcoming weekend, you can say Christian McCaffrey over or under rushing yards. Injury or not, I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey over the rushing yards. But you can make quick withdrawals, which is so nice that when you get the money in your account, you don't have to wait days, even weeks for that to hit your bank. No, no, it's quick. And the gameplay is so super easy. Plus, there's an enormous selection of players and stat types that make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports betting app. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That is prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, well, thanks again for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. I just kind of want to get my overall thoughts on a very unique and, and special game day in Baton Rouge on Saturday. From the pomp and circumstance throughout the week, and rightfully so, of painting the end zones camo. And I'll be honest with y'all, I love the idea. I love the sentiment. Didn't love the execution. Didn't love how it looked. But I, the idea was was great. Putting the American flag on the jerseys, I think, was a, a, a lovely thought. I thought it looked, I thought it looked so good. Like I'm all on board, all hands up for keeping the American flag on LSU's jerseys for every game of the season. I mean, like, why not? Why not? I think I thought it looked fantastic. LSU and Army both sang each other's respective alma maters after the game. You had the paratrooper coming in uh, on the you know, whatever that thing is called, and a parachute. Thank you, parachute. Um, you also had the salute to service before the game. And I loved all the touches with LSU having so so much of a background of being, you know, the old war, the, the old war school. Um, I thought I really enjoyed the touches. I thought it was a very special day. I thought that LSU did enough to honor their opponent and honor what that opponent represents and the sacrifice that all of those people and so many West Point grads have made for our country. So I thought that the, the, the sentiment and the thought and the just the touches that that LSU gave and um, gave to, to Army and gave to those players, I thought it was really special. I thought it was warranted. And I really enjoyed it. And I'm glad that LSU went to such great lengths to be able to honor those men and women who have served our countries. Um, on the other side, maybe a little bit more of a cosmetic note here. Uh, so everyone's dogging the yellow helmets. And look, I know that you don't always come to this podcast to get my fashion advice. Um, I saw this this discussion on Twitter during the game. Everyone was dogging the yellow helmets with the white uniforms. I loved it. I'm very pro yellow helmet with white uniforms because the white helmet with the white uniforms looks sick. 100% yes. But I liked a little bit of a shakeup. I thought it was a little, nice little sunny side up egg look. What I didn't like, and I, I mean that like in a nice way. What I didn't like, however, the stripe on the pants. Can we please get that to match the stripes on the jerseys? Like, what are we doing here? What are we, we got two different kinds of stripe combos. What's going that That... Once I got over the fact of, oh, this could be a game, and once I was able to settle into the fact that this is going to be an absolute blowout of epic proportions and I could kind of just, like, sit back and enjoy the game, um, I couldn't help but look at the stripes on the pants and think, God, my goodness, my goodness, can we not just get somebody to make sure that the stripes look a little bit more uniform? That's all I'm saying here. But pro yellow helmet. I like the yellow helmet with the whites. 
Um, so with my uh, most unimportant takes of the day, that will be that will do it for us today here on Locked On LSU. Coming up in tomorrow's edition of the podcast, weirdly enough, after a shutout, I walk away from that game feeling more concerned about the defense than I did before. And I'll explain on tomorrow's edition of Locked On LSU.